children. Let's talk about air pollution. This is the earth on which we live. Our atmosphere above the earth's surface is composed of many layers. The closest to us is called troposphere. Above that is stratosphere. And above that is the protective ozone layer. Burning of fuels, mainly fossil fuels, and factory waste are the main cause of air pollution. Our earth used to be much greener, but in the last hundred years, the cutting down of trees and the urbanization has also led to an increase in the air pollution. Now, planting trees is an effective way to reduce air pollution. Reduction in pollutants from factories and using catalytic converters and unleaded petrol in automobiles are some other ways of reducing air pollution. Let's talk about oxygen and who discovered it. It was an English chemist, Joseph Priestley, who discovered oxygen in 1774. We all know that air is useful. So let's learn in detail how we use air. Let's study the usage of air. One-fifth or 21% of the air is oxygen. Oxygen is necessary for respiration. So right now, all of us use it for breathing. Photosynthesis in plants is possible because of carbon dioxide in the air. Birds fly because there's air. Nitrogen, that is 78% of the air, is necessary for the growth of plants. It's a complex cycle where plants absorb nitrogen from the soil, which comes from the earth, and then use it as a fertilizer, naturally. Air also supports burning or combustion. The oxygen present in the air is essential for burning. In this small experiment, let's put two candles in two jars, fill them with water, and cover them with a tumbler. The tumbler on the left is bigger and supports the burning for a longer time. This observation tells us that air contains oxygen. Both the glasses contain oxygen, but the one that contains more oxygen supports burning of the candle for a longer time. So the part of the air that supports burning is called oxygen. Wind, which is nothing but air moving at a high speed, also helps in the dispersal of seeds. As you can see, the plants have their seeds and the wind disperses them to nearby locations, which grows the next generation of plants. Plants like cotton and sunflower propagate their seeds. You can see that the wind thus helps in propagation of life on earth. Moving air is called wind and that has great force. It runs windmills which are used to generate electricity. Wind energy is a renewable source of energy, also known as clean energy. Compressed air is used in a number of ways. It is used to fill tires and also used in machines for mining and digging. You may be surprised to know that it is possible for a person to live for five or six weeks without food, as long as he has water to drink. Take away the air that we breathe and life cannot last more than about six minutes. I hope you enjoyed this lesson about the usage of air and air pollution.